Hi, I'm Jeff Bradshaw with Redneck Restorations. This old truck brought to you by ElderlyIron.com. Well, I'm going to see if I can't get this thing all buttoned up today. Well, the first place I'm going to start is hydraulic oil. Now, if you go to the Myers Plow website, because this is the Myers E47, if you go to their website, you're not going to find this. You'll find the E47 and the E47H, but when you go into the wiring diagrams, it's not the same because this is older and they don't have the archived stuff. But if you go to Myers Plow Info, Myers Plows dot info. That's the Smith Brothers out in New Jersey. They've got the info there. Quite good info as a matter of fact. One of the things I found on there, this is my hydraulic oil drain and these two are filters. Get out of my way. So not only do I want to drain it because they say to change your oil every year greatest amount of damage they see in these pumps is water. Because the water freezes and then cracks the base. I can't get it. I bet if I open up this vent, that'll go faster. Or it could be completely drained by the time I get back to the ranch. No matter, because this is where I need to fill it from anyway. I don't know, does stuff that looks like mud in the bottom here mean anything? Not too awfully bad. A little bit of stuff. Nothing major. Ooh, a lot more stuff than this one. Acceptable? Unacceptable. What do I do now? Not to mention the fluid that's in the rams. Well, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. So you didn't get to see me clean all the crud and muck out of the plugs and the filters. But you'll get to see this. Big geysers of oil shooting up out of these cylinders as I move the plow back and forth. If I can move the plow back and forth. I suppose I should have picked it up first. I guess I'll leave that on there loose. Not going to go. have to go glowy cherry red. Oh, I could get it loose. Now. Well, you know what? I got this other one loose. Might as well get this piston out of the way. It's like there's no fluid in this thing at all. didn't 
pull the nipple out of the ram. Or did it? I can't really tell. Yes, it did. Very, very dry down there. Oh, that's nice. The other side did the same thing, pulled the nipple out of the ram. Instead of the fitting coming off. Under a bit of pressure, I see. I was thinking with this thing only hanging on by one thread, it was bleeding off well enough. Don't laugh, I could have been somebody's eye, mister. We're up through the plow, come a bubbling through. It's purple, Jim. Well, now, my biggest concern is whether or not there's water in here. I didn't see any indication that there's any water in these rams. Just dirty looking. Gives me a little bit of an angle. I'm going to film this, but since some of you might be thinking that I'm putting gear lube in the hydraulic system, I thought I'd better show you that I'm not. Why, that's all one piece, it's not a separate one. Well, there's an expenditure. I wonder it wouldn't come off here. Well, I'd much rather have to replace a hose than find out I have to replace a ram. Then there's the matter of the pressure regulator spring on the back side. I'm trying to leave the adjusting screw in the same position. Guess I could have just taken this off. I didn't read that far. But I do want to see the condition of the spring. Is your key? Not broke. It's not rusty. If it's rusty, then you know you got a problem. More hydraulic oil. Now Smith Brothers has YouTube videos as well. If you type in Smith Brothers Myers Plows, you'll get some of their videos. And he shows making a dipstick out of a tie wrap and that you want it about an inch down from the top of the cylinder. However, the cylinder he's measuring is perfectly vertical. Mine is not. I also have an empty system. 
have two empty hoses that need to be filled. I'm going to bring this one right up to the top. Almost perfect. There's a Detroit diesel mechanic named Bob Pomeranke. One time told me, I don't care how soon you think you're going to come back and recheck something. Tighten that plug while you're there. Yes, I'm going to come back and recheck and refill. But when he didn't do that, it cost him $10,000. Tighten it while you're there. So when I'm driving, my hand is usually right here in this position. So what I want to do is I want to put that switch right where I can use my thumb and two fingers to be right there and right there. So actually right in the center, right under that switch. Should have enough room to do that. I got my little U bolt here. I'm gonna go up on my shifter right through that bracket. But it may be a little bit too long. Oh, it's cutting it close. I have to put something around the shifter. Because I don't ever really grab the knob, I just push against it. When you're plowing, you're going to go reverse, probably second, maybe first. So I want it out of my way when I'm trying to shift, and readily accessible when I want it. I don't want to go bust and shift, or uh, switch knobs off when I'm trying to shift. Time to make some holes. love the way this table works. Usually it gets to a certain point point, goes boom! Like that. Reach that. Oh, I can. Good. I just want to keep the thing from whipping around in circles once the drill bit goes through. It's not. It's not aluminum. go to the bigger one. Which is this one. Nine thirty seconds. So it's not quite five sixty. No. Just barely. Perfect. Not much room between the switch and the stud. at all. Could take the knob off. There's no room at all to get one's fingers in here.
that, so I guess I'll just have to grab the shift knob now. No problem. Quite secure indeed. recording but I wasn't Hydraulic system, I figured I'd better show you this. Wait a minute, something's missing. Maybe a little bit, little bit too long. It may be a little bit too long. <laughs> 